Okay, today we are going to replace the carbon ring seal on this 97 Sea-Doo. And basically the carbon ring seal is what keeps the water out of the hull. And you can see down in here, there it is. So you basically have this rubber boot, it's called a bellows, and it clamps to the opening, the through hull opening here. And then the other one clamps to this thing called a carbon ring. And then that carbon ring, you can actually move it with your fingers. I can move that back and there's a gap. If we were sitting in water, water would start coming out of that hole, but it has just enough pressure to push up on this ring here, that slip ring, and that, that piece is stationary with the shaft. So it's always spinning. The carbon ring is not spinning. And the two surfaces slip together without any grease or anything. This is what the replace, replacement part looks like from Westside Marine. We've got a new boot here. That's the carbon ring. Just a piece of carbon. Harder than charcoal, but it's not carbon steel. It's actually carbon. It's, it's intended to wear. And then this is the the washer that rides up against that, and it is not intended to wear. Perfectly smooth surface so that when it mates up against that carbon, you have a perfect seal. And then, of course, the new kit comes with some O-rings that go inside that slip ring. And then this little C-clip here goes on the drive shaft to keep this ring from sliding back to the engine so that you always have constant pressure. So to take this out, we're going to take it apart with the pump in so that the drive shaft doesn't slide backwards. And basically, we're just going to slide. I, I'm going to try to do it here. I think I need two hands, but if you look real close, I'm going to slide this back and you'll be able to see that ring so we just have to pull that out and then this will free up the drive shaft then we can take the pump off and take the drive shaft out and reassemble with the new parts so we did that that was actually pretty easy um, so this part slides a little freer now so it'll be able to slip along the shaft. So now we have to take this clamp off of this boot so the drive shaft can come out of the engine and we'll take the pump out and pull the drive shaft straight back. bolts off, take the pump off. Sometimes you have to wrestle them off. Mine's pretty easy because I take it off quite a bit. There's our drive shaft. You don't want to lose this rubber boot that's on the end of it or you'll have you'll have slack in your drivetrain so that needs to bottom out inside your your impeller coupler there. Also while it's out, you want to inspect your wear ring. Make sure it looks pretty good. Um, this one looks okay, although it's got some chewed up places in it. So I'll have to take a look at that and see what's going on there. Might have to replace the wear ring. We've loosened this, slid this back. This fitting is loose and off. Made sure that slid past the O-rings. So now we're just going to go back here and grab the drive shaft and just pull it straight back. And you heard what fell in there. That was just the metal ring, which is normal. 
you can see they just fell underneath. Just want to show one more time this drive shaft has a rubber bumper on both ends. That's the PTO end and then this is the impeller end so you don't want to lose those. Those are supposed to be there. Side-by-side -side comparison with the old parts and the new parts. The old parts are on the left, so that's the older bellows. You can see the new one is just a little bit taller, which means it's going to be, it'll press tighter against it, but it's also going to be a little harder to put on, I know. And then this is the, the old slip ring, and then the new one, you can tell, um, is much thicker. It's, it's uh, at least twice as thick. It's also heavier, you can feel it. And then, of course, the carbon rings. The only difference here is the new one has a longer shank on it, but that doesn't really matter. That goes inside the boot. But all in all, it looks like they're a little bit heavier duty and bigger parts. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these rubber O-rings and install them inside the metal ring. And then we're going to put a little grease in there as well. Okay, so now we have got our everything put back together, got the drive shaft put in. I put a little grease on the splines and slid it in <clears throat> from the back. You can do it with just one person. Just be careful. You make sure you get your, the metal ring has got to be on the right way where the flat side is facing your carbon surface. And then this is going to pull up onto it past this groove that you see here, which we'll put in our new C-clip. But before we can do that, we need to put our pump back on. And the reason is this whole thing is just gonna slide backwards because there's nothing really stopping it. So we'll put the pump back on. So probably the hardest part about this whole thing is is getting your, your C-clip back in. And uh, this one doesn't have enough pressure where I can actually do it by hand. You can pull it back and you can see that C-clip. Um, if you have a pretty tough boot and it's harder to pull back and you can't do it by hand, one thing you can do is slide two by four under here. Take a pair of uh, channel locks like this. Slide it down there where you've got leverage. Sometimes you can put a zip tie on the bottom of the two handles to keep them together so they don't slip off of the hat. Um, but basically you just get leverage and then you pull it back like that. Um, that works pretty well. But uh, either way, you can do it. And then uh, last thing is I put a zip tie back on the, the grease boot here and then uh, I'm gonna hit that Zerk fitting with some grease and, and pump this back up and then uh, we'll be done. So that is how you replace a, a carbon seal on a, on a Sea-Doo.